We can stop the All right, dithering let's not have the campaign on, on lines. I'm only asking about whether he should do the uh, debate well, or not. Well, that's a matter for, um, for people... Uh, 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 other than me. All right, well, let's talk about Boris Johnson's character because, as you say, he did an interview with Nick Ferrari on LBC and he was asked about how many children he has and we've had a discussion about whether those are legitimate questions to ask. But it is in relation to things that he has said in the past, this Spectator article from 1995 that has now been unearthed. I mean, the first quote at the beginning, I've got the whole article mm. in front of me, and he says, I blame the male sex for the appalling proliferation of single mothers and at the end of that sentence he says and which is producing a generation of ill-raised ignorant aggressive and illegitimate children who in theory will be paying for our pensions what do you say to that well if you often with these i haven't read that full article but often with these are with these quotes that are taken out of context no it's not taken that, out of context because well, i've got it in article, front of me i've read the whole article and i've got other article, bits to show you but that is the beginning often, they very often have a, a different meaning and and boris johnson said this morning uh, on the radio, that he never means to give offence when he writes his articles. He was a but journalist, this is a, a moralising <coughs> tone to this article all the yeah. way through. And I'll come on to what he has said about yeah. working class men. So he says um, the modern British male is useless and women should have the common sense to detect that. He says if he is blue collar, he is likely to be drunk, criminal, aimless, feckless and hopeless, and perhaps claiming to suffer from low self-esteem brought on by unemployment. If he is white-collar, he is likely to be little better. It is no use blaming uppity and irresponsible women for becoming pregnant in the absence of a husband. Does he still think these things? I don't know. I don't think he does. Um, I think these, uh, these articles were written before he went uh, into politics. He never means to uh, give offence. He's written millions of words as a columnist. So inevitably, if you trawl through those co uh, columns, those articles, mm. you will find things, if quoted out of context, have a meaning which people Nick, find offensive. Nick Gibb, these are not, I promise you, these are not taken out of context. I have read the whole article from start till finish. It was written in 1995, but this is an article that points to important social issues and views then, and the Prime Minister should be subjected to those questions now. People will want to know what sort of man he is. You say you don't think he believes these sorts of things. Should we find out? Well, I know he doesn't believe uh, these sort of things. Uh, the whole government is determined to raise living standards to make sure that more people are in work. We have the <coughs> lowest level of unemployment since the mid-1970s because we have a strong economy. So I know that the Prime Minister is committed to ensuring that living standards for everyone in our economy continue to rise. But if you are a journalist, if you are a columnist, and you've been writing articles for many, many years, mm. millions of words as, as he's been written, if you trawl through them, you will find things that people don't like and don't agree with, and, to, and which he, he probably doesn't agree with today. And of course, he is taking part in huge numbers of debates. Uh, next week, he's got the head-to-head -head with Jeremy Corbyn on, on the BBC. He's had the LBC questions this morning. There's plenty of opportunities for for journalists and the members right. of the public well, to ask him it, about those questions. Absolutely, and indeed, Sky's Beth Rigby did exactly that at the press conference. Let's have a listen. As a younger man, you describe children of single mums as ill-raised, ignorant, aggressive and illegitimate. That's how you've described millions of your own citizens. How can they vote for you if that's what you think of them? Well, uh, Beth... Uh, you know, uh, as, I, as I said, well, uh, millions of words that I've written, that you'll, you'll find everybody is able to find uh, some that they can cull from the text and uh, twist them and distort them uh, in, in whatever way that they choose. He had an opportunity there, Nick Gibb, to say, I don't believe those things anymore. It was historic and I've changed my mind. He didn't. He has just said, as you have said, oh, well, these were, you know, millions of words that I have written um, a long time ago. That's not an answer to the question about whether he believes these views. Well, all I can say is I've worked with uh, Boris Johnson for many years and I know he is committed to creating a fairer society with more opportunities for more people. And that's what's driving everything in this election campaign. It's what's driving our education policy. It's what's driving our economic policy. We want to deliver Brexit so we can stop the dither in Parliament, which is preventing yes, all right, Nick, and Parliament focusing on those issues. You're always that, returning, that <coughs> really always returning to the campaign the lines, but there is an important yeah. question at the heart of this election when it yeah. comes to Boris Johnson. Because he has written these things, and for some people they will be 
be pretty shocking. He's still refusing to answer questions about whether he still holds those views and about whether he himself lives up to some of the things that he's written. He says at the end of the article, something must be found first to restore women's desire to be married. That means addressing the feebleness of the modern Britain, his reluctance or inability to take control of his woman and be head of a household. Now, he needs to say, one way or t'other, that he doesn't hold those views, or if he does, explain why. Well, as I said, the Prime Minister said he never means to cause offence when he writes these articles. And, you know, on many occasions when you read the whole context of the article, you can see what he's trying to say and doesn't mean to take offence. He does use colourful language. There's no question about that. And actually, I've been campaigning on the doorstep in my constituency and in other constituencies, and that is one of the things that people find appealing about uh, Boris Johnson. They, they like him because he is prepared to say and use colourful language, and that's what really lies, in part, uh, lies behind his, his popularity with the, with the general public. Right, well, what, including things like men should take control of their woman. Well, I don't, you know, I don't believe he believes that, frankly. Mm. Often, as I said, these do, do, do these other conservatives, phrases, do other if conservatives campaign believe that? Do appear offensive, but you need to ask him about uh, these things. My, Indeed, my experience of dealing with Boris Johnson is he's a very caring well, uh, politician. He's a, a strong leader. He uh, he wants a strong economy. He wants to widen opportunities for people. He's a one nation. Uh, conservative. He just needs to get, we need to get Brexit I know. done, we need uh, to get right, the Nick, economy focused you've on. Had so that, you've had that say okay. and we know what your line is on Brexit. Let's talk about Ofsted and education. Okay.